Hello and welcome everyone to the Environment Primer series of Drish TIS English. My name is Pragya. So, in our previous episode of Environment Primer, we were discussing the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity. And there were two important protocols under that convention. So, the first protocol is the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. And then the second protocol is the Nagoya Protocol. So, in our today's episode, we will be discussing the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. So, in this discussion, we are firstly going to understand about this Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. Then we are also going to understand what are living modified organisms. Then we are also going to see the main features of this protocol. Then we are also going to understand the Cartagena Protocol and the India's position in this regard. And lastly, we will be discussing some of the important questions from the perspective of your prelims examination. But before I begin with this session, I would like to inform all of you about the holy special sale that is ongoing. Okay. So, you are getting up to 50% discount on all online pen drive courses, test series, books and DLP. And this discount is valid from 21st to 24th March. Okay. And to avail the discount, you can click on the link that is given in the description box and you can download the Drishti Learning app. I would like all of, uh, to encourage all of you to avail this opportunity for scaling new heights in your preparation. So, now let us begin our discussion by discussing about this Cartagena protocol on biosafety. So, as I have mentioned that yes, it was one of the two important protocols that was decided under the Convention on Biological Diversity and this convention acknowledges the importance of technology transfer and acquisition alongside implementing effective procedures to enhance the safety of biotechnological advancements. So, what are these biotechnological advan uh, advancements? They are the living modified organisms. And this biosafety protocol uh, oversees the translocation and transboundary movement of these living modified organisms. Moving forward. It mandates that the parties ensure safe handling, packaging and transportation of LMOs across borders, okay? And shipments of LMOs must be accompanied by comprehensive documentation detailing their identification, safety requirements and contact information for further inquiries. And this becomes very important for the countries who are exporting them. And countries who are importing them. Because the main objective of this Cartagena protocol on biosafety is that it, it ensures sustainable use of LMOs. It ensures that they are safely translocated. Their transboundary movement is safe in nature because they pose a huge threat to the human health if they are mishandled. They pose a huge threat to our environment if they are mishandled. And that is why it is the main objective of this protocol to ensure safe translocation of these living modified organisms. Moving forward, it primarily governs the following. So, basically it oversees the cross-border transfer, management and utilization of LMOs posing potential risks to the biodiversity preservations if they are mishandled as I have mentioned in my discussion or as I have mentioned this. Okay. And it governs LMOs dis, uh, deliberately introduced into natural environments, encompassing various entities such as trees, seas, seeds or fish. Because see, LMOs are modified organisms, okay? And there is already a threat of invasive species on our environment. So, if these living modified organisms are mishandled, they will pose a huge threat to our environment, they will pose a huge threat to our human health and that is why we 
move them in a very safe environment and this transboundary movement is overseen by this Cartagena protocol. Moving forward, talking about the jurisdiction, so basically genetically modified agricultural commodities fall within the jurisdiction including crops like grain and corn designated for animal consumption, human food consumption or industrial processing. But its jurisdiction does not include pharmaceutical product. So, the jurisdiction of this Cartagena protocol on biosafety does not extend to the pharmaceutical products. Moving forward, let us understand what are the living modified organisms and we also call them genetically modified organisms. Genetically modified organisms. And what are we trying to do? What are these living modified organisms? We change their genesis. We change them by using uh, their genes by using the modern methods of biotechnology. Okay. And these modifications can include the introduction of genes from unrelated organisms, deletion or suppression of existing genes or modifications of their regulatory sequences so that they can be made more efficient in nature, okay, so that they can be pest resistant, they can be diseases resistant. So, that is why we are trying to modify their genes by using the modern biotechnology. And if you ask me the examples, so basically they include cor crops like corn, soya beans and cotton as well as genetically modified microorganisms used in the industrial processes. For example, you remember the issue of GM mustard? We also have the Bt cotton, Bt brinjal. So, yes, the genetically modified organism issue is going on in India as well because you see, we are seeing that the GM mustard is still under challenge before the Honorable Supreme Court of India. It is still not available for the commercial purposes. So, yes, all of these are example of these GMOs or the LMOs, okay. Moving forward, the proponents who are in favor of using these LMOs offer solutions to global challenges in agriculture, medicine and industry while the critics raise concerns about potential ecological disruptions, health risks and socio-economic impacts. So, yes, uh, there are two proponents who favor the introduction of LMOs or GMOs in the environment and the critics who does not favor the same. Okay, so both of these proponents, they have their uh, points of argument. The proponents who are in favor argue that they, yes, they are very suitable for medicinal purposes, agricultural purposes, etc. But the critics say that they are very harmful to our ecological health. They are very harmful to the human health if they are mishandled, okay. Research and monitoring efforts continue to assess the long-term eff effects and implications of LMOs on ecosystems, human health and social dynamics. So, this is a very niche field. This is a developing field, okay. And research and developments are going uh, by the researcher and scientists about the long-term impacts of the living modified organisms. Moving forward. Let us understand the main features of the Cartagena protocol on biosafety. So, the protocol introduces an advanced information agreement also known as the AIA mechanism. So, what is this AIA mechanism? Under this, the exporter country has to take permission from importer country before they export any kind of LMOs, okay. So, 
so the importer country has full legal rights to make informed decisions about the introduction of lmos in their environment it establishes an online platform as well known as the biosafety clearing house facilitating the exchange of scientific technical environmental and legal data concerning lmos amongst the countries so this is the main feature of the cartagena protocol on biosafety that it mandates procedures such as aia such as lmos ffp and the countries have legal rights to know what they are bringing in their environment moving forward a precautionary approach guides the protocol stance on the transboundary movement of lmos emphasizing preventive measures in the face of uncertainty or potential risks the protocol includes a provision emphasizing that it does not modify the rights and obligations of governments under the wto or other existing international agreements ensuring coherence and compatibility with the established trade frameworks so wto is the main organization that is responsible for carrying out this cartagena uh, protocol on biosafety and it does not in uh, you know overreach on the requirements made by the wto moving forward let us discuss cartagena in india so india is a signatory to the cartagena protocol since its ratification in the year 2003 and this protocol was launched in the year 2000 okay so there was an ad hoc working committee which sat from 6 uh, years from february 1996 okay and finally a extraordinary cop meeting was called okay report was submitted and finally this protocol was adopted in the year 2000 and if you ask about india it is a signatory to this protocol since 2003 if you ask about the legal framework in india about the gmos yes we have a very robust framework on gmos and the rules regarding the genetically modified organisms and these rules and legal frameworks are covered under the environmental protection act of 1986 so since the 1980s itself we have very stringent re, uh, rules regarding the genetically modified organism so we are aware about the potential threats to the environment and potential threats to the human health okay and india has a legal framework regarding the same with this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion we have seen the cartagena protocol on biosafety we have analyzed that yes what was its main objective okay we have also seen cartagena in india we have seen the main features of this protocol now let us discuss the previous practice question which i asked you in my previous session so the question was with reference to the convention on biological diversity cbd consider the following statements your statement number 1 was sharing the benefits arising from the utilization of genetic resources in a fair and equitable way is one of the objectives of the cbd your statement number 2 was the cartagena protocol on biosafety is an agreement under the aegis of the convention on biological diversity so which of these statements given above is are correct options were option a was one only option b was two only option c was both one and two and option d was none of the above so definitely your correct answer is going to be option c both one and two statements are correct now let us discuss some of the important questions from our today's session so the question is which of the following statement about cartagena protocol is are correct your statement number 1 is it addresses technological development and transfer benefit sharing and biosafety issues okay and your statement number 2 is it has been ratified by india so which of the statements given above is are correct your options are option a is one only option b is two only option c is both one and two and option d is none of the above so your correct answer is going to be option c both of these statements are correct moving forward let us discuss the last question of our today's session so the question is consider the following pairs terms sometimes seen in the news and their origin 
तो एनेक्शन वन कंट्रीज कार्टाजीना प्रोटोकॉल स्टेट यो ऑप्शन टू इज सर्टिफाइड एमिशंस रिडक्शन नागोया प्रोटोकॉल स्टेटमेंट थ्री क्लीन डेवलपमेंट मेकेनिज्म क्योटो प्रोटोकॉल सो विच ऑफ दी पेयर्स गिवन अबव इज आर करेक्टली मैच्ड यो ऑप्शंस आर वन एंड टू ओनली ऑप्शन बी इज टू एंड थ्री ओनली ऑप्शन सी इज थ्री ओनली एंड ऑप्शन डी इज वन टू एंड थ्री एंड दिस आंसर विल बी गिवन बाय यू टू मी इन द कमेंट बॉक्स बिलो ओके आई होप दिस सेशन वाज इंसाइटफुल फॉर यू इफ यू हैव एनी फीडबैक रिगार्डिंग दिस सेशन यू कैन ड्रॉप इट इन द कमेंट बॉक्स बिलो इफ यू लाइक द टुडेज डिस्कशन एंड फाउंड टू टिबु हेल्पफुल काइंडली लाइक द वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब टू आवर चैनल फॉर मोर सच इंटरेस्टिंग अपडेट्स थैंक यू For more informative content like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications